Hello, sir. My man. Uh, first off, we, before you hit record, you did something in your office. Do you mind? Do you want to share what you did or are you good? <laughs> I flatulated. Yeah. And here's the problem is that this office, the way it's set up, I think the vents are all shared at least. And uh-huh. so um, if you could refrain from your natural tendency to be a stink bomb, then I'd really appreciate that. <laughs> appreciate that. Uh, my son, second. my son has, uh, has started to model uh, my, my inadequacies in that department of. Yeah. Congratulations to you for setting that example. <laughs> you only have one person to blame. Yeah. Yeah. My, uh, my wife uh, has, has commented when I, when I think it's really funny to, to fart really loud in front of my kids. And all she does is comment on, you know, she, she, she takes our mission statement and, and it backfires on us when, you know, we, we say that we're creating men that are, our, our sons want to become, she's like, are you, are you, are you modeling what your son should become in the future when you, when you do that? Hey, it's not modeling what our son should become because that's that's projecting what we think should looks like. So that's not what our mission statement says. Our mission statement says that we are the men our sons want to become. So yeah. that that is a different question. And he may want to become someone as proficient as uh, dropping bombs as you are. But this is not <laughs> what we had uh desired to talk about today this was not even on the agenda it was the docket as it were yeah um, thanks for bringing it up though thanks yeah you're welcome um related we want to talk about marriage but i will say uh and i'll just give this really <laughs> quickly as a i am not a baseball dad right i don't i played a long time ago loved it uh i try to have my kids avoid it because i find it to be an extremely extremely boring sport however uh, we've been playing a lot hey, of catch lately. I, been outside. I played college baseball, so no, I understand. What are you and, saying about me? It, boring, super boring. <laughs> um, but I loved playing. Super fun sport to play. I, I, I just I cannot watch it. It's just it's Fair. like watching golf. Uh, <laughs> but I was playing. We were playing in the front. Through the I was throwing the ball high. Noah, dude, he like he'll take some like he he's a I, I don't know. Unfortunately. He may be somewhat natural at the sport. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do about that. Uh, but Uncle, Uncle Stewie will encourage him it, to play just just so good. just so you can go watch him more because you like it so much. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, but Jake, he's he's maybe not as naturally inclined. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. throwing, we're playing 500, and the ball, boom, right in his eyeball, and uh, nice, and took it straight. And I tell you, I just don't re- I don't respond really super well in those situations because I, I I tend to be the guy that's like, oh, buddy. Let's check on the baseball. Make sure you didn't hurt it too bad, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is not good. But anyhow, I just share that as a dad fail. Let's get into this topic of marriage. I, I went to church this past weekend. Pastor gave an amazing, amazing message. I won't be, we won't be able to capture all the uh, intricacies and the fine points here, but I want to do a quick overview of, you know, he was talking about marriage and, and, and gave five points to help create a, a, a really good marriage. And, and so the first point was get help. And I really appreciated this and and what he's, what he specified. He's like, look, and, and the church is a, this church specifically is a big believer in this because on their site, on their website, they have a list of vetted, um, vetted and recommended marriage counselors. So you can go through and pick. It's a resource they offer, which I, I thought was absolutely incredible. And that just shows how important it is to them. But they they say, get help. And marriage counseling is a sign of wisdom, not weakness. I really like that. Yeah, that's good, man. Um, I mean, we know we know some some men inside the Storehouse Mastermind that that have done just that. And by no means is it because they have, uh, you know, troubles in their marriage, but they just want to work on their marriage. And um, you know, one of, one of, one of the guys is a marriage coach and, um, you know, have, have done some workshops and, and it's just, you know, it's just like anything else. Like you got to sharpen your tool belt all the time. And if being a great husband or a great wife is important to you, then maybe you should consider doing that. You know, if you get a coach, right? Like we get coaches in business, 
right? We get coaches uh, for sports and, and what does a coach do? A coach, you know, just helps you grow in that area of, of your life. I think it's, I think it's great, man. Yeah. And just a point of clarification, Stu, uh, we don't sharpen our tool belt. We sharpen our sharpen tool the tool. tools. Yeah, in the sharpen belt. The tool. yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure that we all yeah, have the same thing because it'd be a pretty difficult endeavor to sharpen your tool belt. I think unless you have a metal tool belt, which that, that is its could own, be, yeah. that's its own possible, <laughs> uh, a separate issue that, you know, we could discuss at a later time. Uh, second point, date your spouse. You know, it's, it's interesting to me that when you start talking about these things with the regularity that we talk about it within the men's mastermind and, and all the efforts, you know, we're trying to make in this, in this arena, um, this becomes commonplace language, right? And, and these efforts are, they, they, they become, like I said, they just become relatively, uh, routine or, or commonplace that we talk about quite a bit, but dating your spouse is not always, just it's not always something that goes to the top of somebody's mind. And, and a lot of times this this concept is foreign, right? Despite how much we pursued our wives, um, you know, that this is not this is something that kind of falls off, especially us men are guilty. We love pursuit, you know, we we love hunt. I mean, you know, a lot of men love to hunt, like I love to fish. I love the I love the pursuing of the fish. I like the hiking and the creeping over the bear, the, the, the boulders and, and throwing a fly into a hole and, and the fish comes out and there's nothing like a fish coming out, grabbing the, you know, grabbing it and you catch it, you bring it in and then you just throw it back and you go for it again. Right. Like it, it's, it's just the, the passion of the pursuit is something we love. Oftentimes we get it, whatever it is, we stop. We don't, we don't continue to pursue um, you know, I'm not trying to catch that same fish when I'm in the river, I'm, I'm going for the next fish. I want a bigger fish and I want a different, and I'm going to go to this other river and you know what I mean? And, and so in our marriage, we, we get this amazing person that we pursued and then we just kind of fall into like, a, you know, the, just the humdrum of a, a quite frankly, of a marriage that if we're not putting the effort to continue to pursue in. So date our, uh, point number two, date your spouse. Yeah, man. I mean, you, what, uh, what can happen real fast in a marriage is, is you just kind of become roommates, you know, with a common, common goal of, of raising kids. And, you know, uh, I, I fell into that trap. My wife and I fell into the trap and and we're starting to, uh, to go on dates again. It's been amazing. And, you know, one, one challenge further than just deciding to, to date your wife is, um, have meaningful conversations beyond just, your kids or like what's on the calendar or, you know, the plan ahead or, or whatever, you know, similar to like meaningful conversations, uh, when other relationships, like be intentional about the relationships that you're, uh, the, the conversations that you're having or, or like schedule something that's like super fun, right? Like when's the last time you had like belly laughing fun with your spouse? And we did an, another episode on, on that, you know, the real talk about having fun with your spouse go, go schedule something fun and, and have like laugh and have fun and have meaningful conversations. No, just go out to dinner and just talk about, you know, what's going on with your kids. Right. Yeah, man. Love it. Uh, point number three, have great sex. And when he talked about this, he was saying, you know, there are so many elements to having a, a, a fulfilling marriage, especially in this, in this realm of, of sex. And, and he talks about, the biggest part is, is communication, right? Talking about things so that, cause a lot of times, especially around this, this thing that we see as a blessing from God, that it's, it becomes a, uh, it becomes a, a fight instead of a blessing. It's something we fight about instead of something that we are blessed by and enjoy. And so he talks about, you know, the, the false narratives that are created when we don't talk about sex and you know, we'll tell ourselves you know, if you get, quote unquote, rejected in your mind. You know, she's not attracted to me. Something is wrong with her marriage. There's resentment. There's all these things, but maybe uh, it's something completely different. Most likely it's something completely different. And so just communicating, getting past that, that area of shame or whatever's keeping you from having the conversation and actually having a real conversation with your spouse about, you know, what is going on and, and, and talking through these things will oftentimes kill a lot of those false narratives. And, and there's one other point is 
to constantly remind ourselves that we entered a marriage to serve and not to be served. And, and that changes the perspective of everything to include sex um, in our marriage. And it can really enrich and, and bless it because we're not constantly seeking our own personal fulfillment and selfish ambitions through, uh, through our marriage. We're actually in this marriage to serve somebody else. Yeah, man, that's good. I remember one of the conversations we had, uh, again, inside the storehouse mastermind, there's so many amazing conversations, but one of the men we were, we were on the subject of intimacy and, and he said that intimacy doesn't start, you know, at, at 9 PM at night when like, you know, as the man you're, you're ready to have sex, like intimacy starts actually maybe that morning, right? Like where you, where you, you know, serve your, your wife and, and tell her how much you love her and maybe, you know, get her a coffee and hold her hand and, you know, do all these other things that, that are serving your wife, serving your spouse and not just have this expectation that, that you're going to get some that night. Right. And so that, that's been kind of, you know, a, a real mindset shift for me is, is just how do you show up? How do you show up and serve, serve your spouse? And again, having that, you know, having those deep, meaningful conversations. And another thing that, that uh, my wife and I did was the, um, the Gary Keller, one thing, um, couples retreat, uh, there's a whole list of questions and there's a whole section on, on this topic. Um, and having those conversations about like what, what, what the, you know, what the woman needs, what, what the man needs and, you know, how often and where and when, and what's, what's good, what's not like all those conversations. And it could be uncomfortable, but, but like, if it's uncomfortable for the one person that you're sharing life with every single day, you know, maybe, maybe you need to think about that a little bit more. Yeah, I think it's a great point, man. I think it's a great point that we, this is the person that we should absolutely be able to communicate with. And and so I think that's a, that's a, a big element of this. All right. Fourth point, pursue your God. And, and this is, this was a great point. Again, this is in the context of, this was a sermon, right? And so, um, you know, from, for the message we were receiving, this is in the context of, of a Christian faith and, and being a Christian man and, and, but it's applicable in that, what it, what it means. And what he, the example he gave is, you know, he said the right person, quote unquote, the right person will, will never, doesn't really exist and they will never truly complete you. And he gave the Jerry Maguire, he said, Jerry Maguire lied to us. He said, you know, when those elevator doors open or whatever the scene was, he said, you complete me. And and she said, you have me at hello or whatever. Right. He, he said, it's such a, it's, it's such a garbage line because if you're relying on your spouse to complete you or you're relying on any other person to complete you, what, what does that really mean? Like they're not, they were not created to complete you that they're not supposed to complete you. There's only, and for me, only Jesus completes me, right? There's only God can be the person can be the, the, the being that can complete my life. Because if you're putting that kind of expectation on your spouse, that is a very, very unfair thing to expect that your spouse or another human being can complete you. That is a very, very high bar and, and it's impossible. And so there's, you know, when you talk about the fruits of the spirit, what well, God gives the fruits of the spirit, not your wife, you know, when the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control, uh, those, all those things, the fruits that we believe in, your wife can't give you that. Your spouse can't give you that. That is, that is a gift from God and that relationship. And so, you know, spending time, there's also a big element, spending time with God makes me a better husband, right? Spending time, quiet time and getting myself right and doing the things that, that building that relationship will also make me a better man, which in turn makes me a better husband. Yeah, dude. One, one of the things that uh, our uh, the worship leader at my church said one of the, one of the times we were you know they were singing songs and they kind of dismissed the church. She said, "Go out this week and take action with your eyes set on eternity." And if you think about that and and, and the way you show up every single day um, with your if you show up with your eyes set on eternity and the actions that you take, um, you know you you live for eternity. Like you have an eternal life in heaven. If you take your actions there first, knowing that your actions may impact 
you know, what that looks like, right? Go there first and have your eyes set on attorney. The next, you know, in line is is your spouse, right? But but she can't she can't determine eternity for you. There's only one person that can do that, and that's and that's God. Yeah, man. It's good. It's good. All right. Fifth point. Just don't quit. And, and this was uh I, I love this. And and he talks about, you know, from the biblical biblical perspective, the Bible talks about love always perseveres. Love always perseveres. And you're remembering we all have issues, man. None of us are perfect. And so we have to choose. We literally have to choose not to quit. And we should also harken back to the words that we said, till death do us part, right? If you didn't take that seriously in your vows, then it's not, or if you don't consider a vow to be something serious, then then I think you have some digging to do and some, some self-reflection, contemplation to do, because these are the things that we said. We said this was important. And and it's there's also this element, also a great the title of a great book, but love is a choice. Love is not this feeling. I mean, it, it, anybody who's been married for any amount of time, and if you've never been married, I, I hate to spoil this for you, but you you go through this phase and you have this person, you're pursuing them, you love them, here's flowers and all this romance and all this stuff. And then you get married and and uh, you know, the way that they used to sip their tea with a slurp was so adorable and the crunch of the apple that they used to chew on. It was just such a, such a precious thing. Two years into marriage, that stuff drives you bonkers. It drives you nuts. Like, do you have to drink your tea so loud? Like, do you really have to crunch an apple like that? Like, is there not a way to eat that more quietly? But it's yeah. true, right? It's true. Like that. these are the things where we're getting in these long commitments and the feelings part of them come and go. It's like a wave, right? And they come and they go but you can choose to love each other forever. You can choose to show up and to, to show up in love because that's, that's what you have to do. And you just have to not quit. And all these things can help you get there too, right? The, the getting help, the dating your spouse, the having great sex, the pursuing your God. These things can help you to make that choice. Um, because if you're honest with yourself, even in friendships like ours, man, we're, we, we love each other, super deep relationship, like we annoy each other, man. Like we, it, we could make a, a choice. Lot. Yes, a you lot. do annoy me a lot. And and we could make a choice to be like, ah, it's just easier to, to not invest. It, it is easier. Like I will tell you, it is easier to not enter a relationship with your wife. It is easier to not be vulnerable and 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 bring yourself to your relationship with your friends. It is easier to not do those things. But life is way less rich. And, and quite frankly, we weren't created to, to not have these relationships. And so I think it's, you know, just don't quit is, uh, is something we can get behind. Yeah, man. I I was, uh, I was doing some research for, uh, a presentation that we're working on. And, uh, I saw this, this statistic that said that 50% of first marriages in America right now end in divorce. And I think it was like 68% or something like that uh, of second marriages and divorce. And then it just continues to go up from there, like 78, 85. And, and, you know, as we're talking through this, I, I, I bet you that if one of the two or both would have just had that mindset of just don't quit, right? Just, just when it gets hard, just don't quit. I bet you that that number that 50% number would be a lot lower. Oh yeah, no doubt, dude. And it's crazy because those percentages go up because your expectation continues to be unmet and the, yeah. the, the negative feelings, the whatever depression, the sadness, the, whatever the, the uh, you know, the negative emotions that got you that place, they just magnify because you're like, well, well, the first one didn't work. Well, the second one, this person's not meeting my needs either. They're not, they're not, they don't complete me. And so then you're even more so in yeah. a, that state. So that, that's the numbers continue to go up because your, your expectations are so false. They're so wrong. Your, your focus is in the wrong place that it is inevitable that it is not going to work unless you take responsibility to change yourself and mm. your expectations and what you're seeking. The reason you're getting into these marriages Unless you do that, you will continue to be a statistic and that statistic will continue to climb 
as you, you know, continue to change partners. Stuff, man. Motivates hey, me buddy. to uh, get after it, man. Just be an awesome husband, right? Be an awesome spouse. That's right. And and this applies to so many other areas, right? I mean, it's it's yeah. you know, but but it starts with um again, this is a message of hope because what I love about it is very action driven. Get help. Well, you can get help. You can do that. You can totally. hire somebody, you can have a conversation, you can date your spouse. That is that's a very easy thing. You can have great sex. A little bit more difficult. There's got to be probably two to tango in there. Um, but but again, you can you can you can impact that. Pursue your God. Obviously, it's hundred percent on you, and then don't quit. That's a choice you make, right? That is a choice you make. And and that's what's so encouraging about this message for me. And uh, and I love those five points, man. You do those yeah. five things, dude. You do any one of those five starting today, you're let, you're let gonna me, you're gonna be making a significant change. Let me add something else to it. Uh, maybe a, a six a six step is surround yourself with other people that have uh this these same goals and the same mindset and dude. that can have these conversations, right? Powerful, right? You tell you tell a group of dudes like our guys, hey, I'm gonna date my spouse. Like you better expect that they're yeah. gonna be like, how'd the date go? And then you gotta come back and be like, uh, yeah, uh, it didn't go. Okay, yeah. cool. What when is the date? I will text you on the day that you tell me that your date is <laughs> yeah. and see if you guys are going on a date. I'll call your wife and make sure that this is happening. So right. yeah, dude, I love it. I love it. Good stuff, All man. right, boy. Go be better. Be different. Be different, be better. Be kinetic. See ya. Peace.